Hello and welcome to Brickwork Ratings, yet another podcast series. Today, we'll be understanding about the Indian economy for the financial year 23. What is the outlook? How are the GDP projections? And a lot of uh, trends from none other than but the chief economist with National Stock Exchange, Mr. Tirthankar Patnayak. Sir, a very warm welcome to you. Thank you. Thank you, dear. It's a pleasure. So we would like to start the session with understanding what is your outlook on the Indian economy? How do you see the GDP projections for this year? Uh, you know, the government's number for FY23 is slightly north of 8%. The RBI's figure is about 7.8%. Uh, and uh, for the year gone by, FY22, the number is, uh, is about 9.2%. These are the CSO's advanced estimates. While, uh, you know, what we've seen is that the recovery that began in September last year has sort of slowed down considerably, especially with uh, a number of uh, headwinds coming from, um, you know, most recently the Russia-Ukraine conflict, before that, uh, you know, rising commodity prices, and now uh, a renewed fear of COVID in China, where uh, the GDP number for China for this year is set at 5.5%, the lowest in 30 years. That has made us uh, reduce the um, you know, FY22 number to about 8.9%. So we are uh, 30 basis points lower than the government. And, um, and we are for FY23, we believe um, in the current scenario, growth should be around 7 to 7.5%. And as we did, we, you know, this is meaningfully lower than the RBI's figures, but we qualified by saying that a lot of uncertainty is still there in the system. And uh, until that is cleared, uh, we believe that growth could be anywhere between 7 to 7.5. This brings me to another question. How severe implications are we expecting from the recent crisis, that's ongoing crisis, uh, Russia-Ukraine war? Uh, how will be the Russian sanctions impacting us? The base case is that the conflict should get resolved over the you know, over this month, around March, by by which uh, is when we are expecting hostilities should cease. That's our base case. And uh, what is, however, an imponderable is the level of sanctions that will be that will continue and the impact it will have on the larger global economy. Uh, one thing we've already seen is that the commodity complex is continues is, is rising meaningfully. <clears throat> not just in crude, but also in the larger commodity complex, especially food. Uh, you know, Russia is the world's largest meat exporter. Ukraine is the world's fifth largest meat exporter. And if sanctions do extend to there, uh, then we will have possibly the same kind of food inflation that we saw in 2008, 2009, which, you know, in some cases led to the Arab Spring in uh, 2010. So that's, that's considerably a worry. And... Uh, um, However, what is interesting is to also see that the Fed had its uh, you know rate hike yes you know yesterday 25 basis points and uh, you know, the Fed chair has pointed out that they will have six more hikes through the year. So the regardless of the conflict, regardless uh, the Fed's tightening program has continued and uh, you know they have also pointed out that inflation and and that the rate hikes will continue into 2023. So for us, uh, that gives us a curious uh, you know, uh, counter signal uh, in the sense that when dollar hardening typically takes place and once risk off gets over, you should see a severe overhang on the commodities complex. So a large part of the imported inflation that we are talking about, that we are worried about, uh, may not actually happen. To answer your question, therefore, um, the Russia-Ukraine conflict to us, uh, our base case is that the impact will be short in nature. And it is responsible for a high amount of the risk premium that we see in commodities, not necessarily for the entire. As you rightly spoke about the inflation trends, so this brings me to a very important question. How do you see the RBI's, uh, you know, interest rate, uh, interest hardening cycle? How much or when are we expecting that to happen? Our base case is uh, that of a 50 to 75 basis point rise on the repo. So, uh, you know, the uh, policy repo will go from the current 4 to about 4.5 to 4.75. But this will still be back-ended uh, in the year. The current scenario that we have is uh, especially, you know, specifically on growth inflation. We believe the Indian economy is at a weaker point in growth than the street. And therefore, we believe that the room to raise rates also is limited. 
And uh, to my earlier point, as I said, if the current, uh, you know, right now it's a it's a terrible risk off scenario where you are seeing you know dollar hardening. You're also seeing you know commodity inflation. These two generally do not go together. What typically happens is a higher interest rates uh, works against all risk assets, including commodity. Let's also remember that uh, you know, uh, global growth has been pared down meaningfully by multilateral organizations, let's say like the IMF, from 5.9% last year for 2022, the number is now around 4.5%, 4.4%. So we believe that the inflation that we are seeing on the commodity prices is likely to be a large part due to uh, the current risk off, which will be relatively short term in nature. What this means is that for the central bank, you know, uh, India's central bank, the required increase in interest rates would be also lower. So we are lower than the street in terms of uh, reducing, rate, I mean, uh, raising rates for this year. And uh, we believe that, uh, you know, you should see some respite, at least on the food inflation bit, once the you know the, the uh, summer season starts, so we, if we have decent rains this year, then food inflation should be should be relatively lower. Of course, the imported component of inflation cannot still be low. So, sir, talking about the liquidity, uh, you know, it it makes me immense pleasure to understand how are the domestic flows and the foreign flows currently, uh, you know, for the system. Uh, are we having enough liquidity? Recently, we have seen a lot of outflows from foreign players. So how is that? So, um, you know, um, FIIs have sold off meaningfully. The overall sell this year uh, is estimated around, you know, north of $30 billion. Severe amount of flows, uh, you know, outflows have been seen in the markets. Uh, that has also led to a, a decent correction from the, from, the, from the high levels that we saw in last year. However, what is interesting is that, uh, you know, while we, I cannot comment about the direction of the markets, I will say that uh, you know, in terms of institutional flows or in terms of retail flows, the inflows from the Indian system have continued. So not only through domestic institutional investors, but also retail segment. So the amount of money that came in through the retail segment last year was north of 1.4 trillion rupees. So that's about 18, 19 billion dollars. And those flows have sort of continued even in January and February. What is also interesting is that uh, the SIPs, the monthly SIP that comes in from retail flows, used to be averaging around eight to nine thousand crores, but now it's in double digits. So I would say that you know um, the the inflows into the markets from the domestic segment have continued. Also, sir, uh, so how do you see the you know Indian economy, uh, or I should be saying, uh, what are what are the repercussions that we are expecting out of the uh, you know, recently China hit by the another wave of COVID again? That's a very good question. I mean, um, my sense is that the current downgrades of estimates on growth uh, globally, as well as in domestic markets, uh, Indian markets have been based on uh, the Fed tightening, uh, the inevitable tightening by central banks. And secondly, with the Russia-Ukraine conflict, the China slowdown has not been really factored in entirely. You know, uh, China's as I said earlier on in our conversation, the estimate for FI this, this year, CY22, would be around 5.5%. That's the lowest in 30 years. So plus, China continues to follow a COVID-0 policy. We've seen lockdowns in several large cities, including Shenzhen uh, recently. That is likely okay. to, uh, in our opinion, exacerbate two things. See, China is the largest contributor to incremental GDP growth across the world over 40% of incremental GDP growth comes from China. Secondly, uh, the supply chain disruptions that we'd seen over the last two years, 2021, 2020, uh, 2020 and 2021, were now you know, trying to get easy. With China going back into lockdown mode, with China slowing down, this will have a renewed impact on global growth. So to answer your question, we will see GDP growth for the world which is already at 4.4%, uh, as I mentioned, uh, IMF's numbers for this year, likely to be pared down even further. So you have a higher uh, you know, inflation est estimate by the Fed. Uh, you have higher rates from the Fed, and then you have lower GDP growth. I think China will contribute. All right. So before we let you go, one last question to you. Are you uh, expecting, or maybe if you can suggest some measures that you know we are expecting from the government to ensure the recovery pace is uh, coming back on track 
My only answer, uh, I think, would be the framework that Honorable Finance Minister had put in in the budget this year. So the thought was that over the next, uh, you know, this year India enters its 75th year of independence. So there is an Amrit Kal that is thought over the next, you know, so many years, which will uh, provide the framework or the, you know, route map for India's growth path. And uh, some of the things that the budget pointed out there were uh, in terms of, um, you know, logistics, improved logistics, uh, you know, open access, open access, uh, you know, uh, systems, which will enable uh, movement and commerce in a seamless manner, hitherto unseen in India. So that's the bigger thought process that the government has had in terms of actual money, in terms of actual spending. Last year's FY22 budgeted numbers for government capex for 4.5 lakh crores. The final number was 6 lakh crores. For this year, uh, the number is 7.5 lakh crores. So there is a significant amount of money uh, in terms of capex that the government is putting in until we see private corporate capex pick up again. So I think that is likely to continue. We do not see any faltering on that front. Um, crude numbers have already started to come off. And uh, you know we believe that there is room for the government to continue the capex plan without making any changes to their current fiscal arithmetic at this point. Thank you so much, sir, for the great insights. Uh, it was really great, insightful session for us. Thank you so much. Yeah, always a pleasure. Thanks to BWR. Thank you.